Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at passkey support in your Microsoft account and whether you should enable it. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Therott, and we have spoken in the past about such things as pass keys, right? This new passwordless security authentication feature for online accounts. Uh, we've talked about securing your Microsoft account, which is super important um, because, among other things, you use it to sign into your Windows 11 or Windows 10 PC. Um, Microsoft added pass key management support in Windows 11 23H2. Kind of a light interface, nothing dramatic, but it's there. Microsoft supports passwordless technologies in the Microsoft account. But interestingly, until fairly recently, it didn't support using a passkey to authenticate yourself against your Microsoft account. So uh, recently, sometime in the past month, they've added that capability. Based on my initial analysis is a strong word, but based on my initial look at it, it appears to be incomplete and also incorrect uh, as far as the pass key spec goes. And uh, for that to make sense, I think we'll just have to take a look. So as you may recall, you manage your Microsoft account uh, on the web. There's, there's no real way to do this in Windows. There's a, a simple interface in Windows, but you really want to go to account.microsoft.com. Um, you'll have to sign in. You'll have to authenticate as well. If you set this thing up with 2FA, two-factor uh, authentication, like I recommend, uh, probably through an authenticator app on your phone, right? Um, you'll have to uh, go through that. And then you need to go to the security dashboard. Now, yeah, I was going to say, depending on what happens here, you have to authenticate again as well. So I've set this up where I can authenticate using Windows Hello on this PC. That's a pin. Um, this PC actually does support uh, finger and facial recognition, but I just haven't set that up. Okay, so the security dashboard is starting to change. This is kind of interesting. So um, depending on the PC and potentially the resolution, I'm gonna, you know, it's, no, it's, I guess it's normal. Um, you get this kind of um, uh, different interface. The, uh, the older interface is a, a set of four cubes or squares, um, but it's the same thing. You wanna manage how you sign in, right? And this is that interface where it lists, um, you know, your password, if you have any uh, secondary email addresses you use to sign in or verify against your Microsoft account, if you wanna get a text message, to get a code, uh, you can set that up here. Um, but there are other authentication types that are actually more secure, like the 2FA Microsoft uh, Authenticator um, type um, choices, right? And so for this particular account, I don't really have a lot set up here. I think there's an interesting mix between having too much in here and too little. Um, you do want to have options, but they should be options that you control. So for example, it doesn't make sense to verify your Microsoft account against a work or school account necessarily, because you will eventually graduate or perhaps lose your job or move on to a different job. And then you won't have access to that account and you won't be able to verify. So you want to make sure that anything that's in here, whether it's your phone number or an email address, or whatever is something that you control um, that you will always have access to. So that's, we already talked about that in a previous episode, but every time I look at the screen, I think about that sort of thing. Um, I do have, I do not have rather a password list account set up. This is something Microsoft allows you to do with an MSA where you literally remove the password from your account. Um, that's a <laughs> bridge too far for a lot of people. It is actually for me as well. Um, but I do have two-step verification turned on. I strongly recommend it. And that's that Microsoft Authenticator uh, or other options, security keys and so forth, right? So this is the same interface as before. Nothing has really changed. Um, but we want to add a passkey, right? So we can, we can add a passkey here. So um, obviously, you would click this add a new way to sign in or verify. And this is where the first bit of confusion comes in because as you can see, passkey is not one of the options, right? If we were going to add a Microsoft Authenticator or, or other author Authenticator app, we would use this use an app choice. Email code is pretty straightforward. But this one says face fingerprint pin or security key. And that's actually the one you want for this, right? So it will actually, uh, you could actually use this to authenticate with uh, Windows Hello, which are those first three options, or a security key, which is a physical security key, which uses pass keys as it turns out. But uh, we don't have one of those here, so we'll click that. And this is the second bit of confusion because you're asked where to choose the pass or where to save the pass key. And there are two options, uh, your phone, basically, your phone or an iPad. So an iPhone, iPad, or Android device. 
or a security key. And this is what I meant up front when I said this is not the spec. The, the point of a pass key is that it is a way to authenticate yourself without having to use a password that is based on the device you're using currently, right? And what I mean by that is when you authenticate yourself with a phone using Microsoft Authenticator or whatever, there are two devices involved, right? The, the, in that case, the, the, the second factor is this phone. Um, with a passkey, the second factor is on your device and it uses all of the security built into your device to make it okay. In other words, because we have a TPM and because we sign in with a Microsoft account and because we protect that Microsoft account with a Windows Hello something, pin, facial recognition, fingerprint recognition, whatever, um, there's, we've established this chain of trust. But that's not an option here. So um, it's going to create a passkey on a different device, which, like I said, it just bypasses the entire point of passkey. So I already have a problem with this, but let's do it anyway. So I'm not going to use security key because, like I said, I don't have a security key here, but I do have a phone. So it's going to give me this QR code. Hopefully everyone watching this video is now signing into my Microsoft account with it. But I will use my pass my phone rather and its camera to sign in. So it's connecting and it's asked me if I want to create a passkey. So in this case, this is kind of interesting because on my phone, I have a third party password manager that can save passkeys and it overrides the phone's built in ability to save passkeys, which makes those passkeys portable, which is not part of the passkey spec. You know, it, it kind of keeps going on and on. Passkeys are complicated. Um, Typically, if you didn't have something like this, it would save it directly to the phone. In this case, it's going to save it to my password manager, which honestly is OK. So I'm just going to say OK to that. And it's it checks my face. It uses in this case, it's an iPhone. So face ID and it says OK. And then back on the computer screen, it says that the passkey is saved. Click OK. And I'm going to be asked to name it. Yep. So it comes up Dashlane. Dashlane is the name of the third party. Um, password manager that I use. I'm just going to make this a little more explicit so I know exactly where this thing is. Although it doesn't really matter, right? Because Dashlane uh, is on my Android devices. It's on my Windows PCs in the browsers, I should say. So technically, depending on the app or the website or whatever it is I'm using, I should be able to authenticate against this from any instance of Dashlane that I'm using. But I don't want to complicate this even further. Um, and then yes, okay, good. So now we get back to the screen. And you can see it's been added here. We've got a, a, a pass key option so that I can sign in. Um, is there a good way to demo this? Not exactly, but I think the best way would be to go to an in private window and I could go to something like outlook.com and then sign in with the same account um, because it's an incog or a in private or incognito type window. I will have to type all my stuff and oops, what's going on here? Outlook.com. If I could type, I would be dangerous. So it's going against my authenticator app because that's the default, right? And honestly, this is still the best way to do passwordless in Windows, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to choose other ways to sign in, right? And I have other ways. So face, fingerprint, pin, or security key will use Windows Hello on this computer or a security key if that's what it was. Um, I could request using the app. That's the authenticator app, authenticator app or I could use a password. So basically <laughs> what I've just demonstrated is I created a passkey that I now cannot use, <laughs> right? And it still asks me to do an authentication with uh, the Microsoft Authenticator app because that's what happens sometimes. That's okay. I don't mind that. Um, but I, I went through this process. That, in other words, Microsoft added support for passkeys. I created a passkey using their system and then I tried to use that passkey and their system does not support the passkey. <laughs> so this is the Microsoft world, unfortunately. Um, and I guess, uh, you know, this is not completely useless. The truth is this will work differently on different devices. If I was signing into my Microsoft account on a mobile app on my iPhone, I don't want to promise you, but there's a good chance I would be able to use that passkey to authenticate myself. Of course, I have other things on my phone too, right? So it would probably default to that authenticator app. Um, it's kind of hard to say. And that's the problem. So here we have pass keys that are very complex to begin with. They're hard to use. We have Microsoft not implementing it to the spec. They have Microsoft not supporting the most basic pass key feature, which is the point of pass keys, 
which is that you save it to the device that you are using. Pass keys are supposed to be device specific. You're supposed to have one. If I create a pass key on this computer, I should be creating it on this computer, but they don't even offer that as an option. So um, this is what I meant up front when I said, you know, they've done this thing. It's not complete. It's not ready. They shipped it out into the world. It's there if you want it. And, you know, depending on the types of devices you use, it might make sense. Uh, but I would say for most people, it kind of doesn't. I mean, it's just sitting there doing nothing. It's I, it's probably not harmful in any way. It's sa it's safe in Dashlane. Dashlane, I do, I do trust. And uh, they have a good system for um, portability of pass keys, which, you know, again, not part of the spec, <laughs> but, but whatever. Um, so I did this and I don't know why. And I, my recommendation for everyone watching this is to just hold off on this. Um, the initial advice I had up front about uh, how you would secure, properly secure your Microsoft account still stands. You should have 2FA, like we have down here. Um, you should have multiple ways to authenticate. Um, but a pass key right now, if you're primarily using Windows, not a great option. So, unfortunately. Well, I hope you found <laughs> that useful, if only as a warning of what not to do. Um, we'll have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can learn more at twit.tv slash HOW. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you especially to all of our Club Twit members. We love you. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.